It's the book club for kids. It's the book club for kids. It's the book club for kids. It's the book club for kids podcast. It's a bonus edition of the book club for kids. Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy. Last week, we discussed Kelly Barnhill's Newbery Award winning novel, The Girl Who Drank the Moon. We spoke to Kelly about her inspiration for the book, but there's more to the conversation. Give a listen. Talk to me about your life as a writer. Mm -hmm. You know, give us your typical day. Mm -hmm. You talked about where your ideas come from, Mm -hmm. or actually you talked about how long it takes for your ideas to germinate. So so walk us through the writer's day of Kelly Barnhill. Okay, well, so my writer's day is very different now than it used to be uh, because my kids are older now. Uh, Once upon a time, my kids were very small, and, uh, and so my writing life was very compact, and I used to have to wake up at four in the morning every morning and I would write until six and then would uh, wake my kids up and get them ready for the bus and make their lunches and uh, and you know do do the rest of that stuff and and once all three of my kids were in school then my writing life began to change um, one of the nice things about being um, uh, being a stay-at-home mom uh, who's also trying to write and you know trying to juggle all of these things is that you don't realize how ruthlessly efficient you are at the time because you just feel desperate right and but once the kids are out of the house boy oh boy can you get a lot done it was pretty awesome uh, and and so so now I mean because because I work from home uh, and because both my husband and I are self-employed, we can we are able to you know tag team somewhat. But a lot of times, you know, the um, uh, I'll have I'll have writing days and then I'll have um, uh, uh, household days where I volunteer at the school or I have to take a kid to the doctor or whatever. Uh, but you know, a lot of times for me, um, I will um, I'll I'll sort of chase everybody out of the house and uh, I'll spend some time reading uh, and then I'll spend some time uh, writing writing stuff that is likely not going to turn into anything I, I like working longhand and um, and so I'll, I'll just have some um, kind of germinating and playing with language for a little while then I go for a run and then I come back and and um, and I actually have to get down to business now all of my books start out longhand uh, and um, and so all of my books so first I have my box that I am sort of adding things over time so which is it, it just allows a place for thoughts to sit in one place uh, and I'll I'll do all kind. I have a box right now for um, a book that I'm working on that eventually will be called Dispatch from the Hideous Laboratories of Dr. Otto Van Dracht. Um, and really, because so I could say that a lot. That's really why. And um, and and so that I have I, that box um, has some stuff about you know characters and world and um, kind of the politics of the world, but it also has tons and tons of research in there. So I've been doing a lot of research into um, piracy and shipbuilding and uh, the Holy Roman Empire and the Habsburgs and um, and uh, and also uh, medieval architecture and alchemy and poisons so that's been very fun uh, and uh, and uh, so so that so so things will sort of that's not really writing, though. That's just I have to think about a book for a really long time. Uh, when it's actually time to write the book, I write it all um, uh, longhand. And and then I, I, I read through the longhand pages, and I take a lot of notes, and then I put it all away, and I recompose from memory. And um, so that's so the longhand draft is really draft zero. Um, uh, the next draft is draft one. I get through the end of that, and then I put that away, and I recompose from memory again. Uh, the reason why I do this it's very time consuming I can't recommend it uh, actually but it's the only way I know how so that's how I do it Uh, the reason why is that once upon a time when I was in still in my training period as a writer and was writing books that nobody will ever see I still do this actually I still have books that I write that are only for me and no one will ever read them Uh, and uh, um, but I was writing a book that no one will ever see this was before I learned about writing longhand first and I was on this ancient Dell computer that uh, my husband had bought for me on eBay because we were very broke at the time but he really wa- wanted to support my writing and he bought that for me it was very sweet but it burst into flames uh in mid uh 
sentence. Um, and this was when I used to write very grown up stories. So I think I might have been writing kind of a steamy scene or something. I don't know. Actually, I can't even remember what scene it was. But, um, but it literally burst into flames on my lap. Uh, and I was probably 140 pages in. And, but I'm an idiot. I didn't back up anything. Um, and so it was all gone. Like the whole hard drive was melted. And after crying a couple for a few days, I was just like, well, I already know the characters and I'm just going to start over. And it was this wondrous experience actually. I felt like I was on the cusp of limitless space. So then for a while, my, my revision technique was um, comprised of select all delete. I would just delete everything and then start over. And then my husband told me that I couldn't do that anymore because I was giving him an ulcer. So I, uh, so I said, fine, fine, fine. I, I made a file. I had, to, it had to, to feel like I was deleting it. So I made um, a, a, a file that was called Utter Garbage, and that's still there. And I eventually fish it out, out, out of there, but that is where the draft has to go while I'm working on draft number two or draft number three. So, and then I can look through and like find out the things that I missed or th find the things that I want to like add to it later. And, and then there's a lot of like, it almost feels like, you know, my, um, uh, uh, my lady ancestors and their, and their quilting. Like I, uh, I, it is a very sort of tactile experience like that. We have interviews with dozens of other writers at our website, bookclubforkids.org, on our Writers on Writing page. This is where writers share how they work, how they think, and how they create books. It's a great place to pick up writing tips if you are working on a book yourself. That's bookclubforkids.org on our Writers on Writing page. This episode is supported in part by the D.C. Commission on the Arts and Humanities, which receives support from the National Endowment for the Arts, and by the Nora Roberts Foundation. Thanks this week to Jonathan Jensen, who composed and performed our music, and to Emma Steinkellner, who designed our logo. We have a free newsletter designed for teachers, parents, and librarians, and it's full of free tips about how you can turn kids into lifelong readers, especially those who are a little more reluctant to pick up a book. You can sign up at our website, bookclubforkids.org. And if you like the show, why not subscribe and tell a friend about Book Club for Kids, and you know, you may have to take a moment and teach them how to subscribe as well. I'm Kitty Feldy. Thanks again for listening. And if you're looking for a way to introduce civics education to your kids, check out our other podcast. It's called The Fina Mendoza Mysteries, and it follows the adventures of the 10-year-old daughter of a congressman who solves mysteries inside the U.S. Capitol and manages to teach a little bit about government along the way. That's The Fina Mendoza Mysteries wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you.